welcome to the I Knew Some But I Didn't Know It All podcast. I'm your host, Shane Gucci. Well, I knew some, but I didn't know it all. Almost hit this little rap on this track, cause it's all. Get into the good stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and start recording. <laughs> you know, so. Good idea. Welcome everybody to the two year anniversary of the I knew soon, but I didn't know it all podcast. Cheers, Cheers. Well, bam. So right now we got Jeff Fernandez from the Shadow Band Podcast. Woo. Yo. Woo! Next we got E Rock. From the Trifecta Airsoft Podcast. Yo, yo. Uh, next, we have 
my co-host and very dear friend Andy Rouse of the Deep Share Podcast. What up? Yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah. Happy two years. Thank you, bro. And next we have my man, one of the reasons I'm even fucking podcasting, Mark motherfucking Steves. <laughs> Yo, what's up? From man? the My Family Thinks I'm Fit Crazy podcast. Yeah. Congrats, brother. Yo, Thank yo. One year. Uh, shout out to All Media United. Hell yeah. And next, I don't know if he's actually here or not. It says he's here. He's unmuted. He has no video up. We got one of my best friends in the whole world, G. Collins. You. Hey. I didn't know what's what the was. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't really have an agenda tonight, but E Rock did suggest talking about Flat Earth. <laughs> Let's go, dude. So, if we just want to go ahead and fucking send it, get right into the crazy, crazy. <laughs> let's, let's fucking do it because I don't know what to think about it like I honestly just don't care at this point but <laughs> it is like very interesting on you know all the research on both sides and pretty much it I mean I, I'll just like generalize all of the conversations we're going to have tonight um, you know anything you fucking look into you're going to find shit that you want to find so you know, gonna take it with a fucking grain of salt. Use your own intuition and discernment. So yeah, yeah sure. what do any of you know about flat Earth or want to discuss about it? Well, is there anyone else on here that believes flat Earth besides uh, me? I would. I I don't know if I'd say I believe in the flat Earth, but I, I'm. I'm there with it, dude. Like, I think it's I'm just like, a spiritual realm. I think this is just a like a, a dream that we're all sharing anyway. So, yeah, you got to ask me day to day for me personally. I, I'm familiar <laughs> with the proper model, right? Uh, so, I argue in favor for flat earth in a lot of debates, but I'm not necessarily a flat earther. Yeah, I would say like th it's easy to label one way or the other sometimes. Like, I'll fight against NASA and immediately right. be called a flat earther, you know? <laughs> so there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of layers there, you know? Oh yeah. All right. Well, we got Lachlan, Lock my in the fucking zoo. Sorry for this yeah, conversation. Um, he said he was going to stop by. Live from a fucking zoo. What's going on? <laughs> oh, what's up, man? Cheers. Dude, uh, um, whole fucking panda was kind of perfect, dude. Like, so we can <laughs> prove that pandas are real or fake. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do we want to do that? Do we want to cover that real quick? That pandas are, in fact, real. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's oh, do you're it. already there. <laughs> Hold on. Let's, let's see it. it. Hold on. You're going to have to get in there and rip its face off. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking man. It's a dude in a suit. Did you bring some uh, eucalyptus? You can uh, kind of coax it out of its. Uh, Jail or shell or whatever it's in. <laughs> there we go. Hold on. There we go. It's really Proof. Just jail. Pandas are real. There's one right there. That's just a fucking furball. That's not a panda. Is that yeah, a red, it's panda? A red panda? Pandas are oh, white. Okay. Dude, that's CGI. What? <laughs> He's in Australia. He's CGI. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, was no, say, I didn't I'm trust actually, him as soon as I saw the daylight. I was like, this dude is not even on our side of the planet right now. <laughs> what is going on? No, no, no. So um, fun fact for the for those of you in this podcast now who are flat earthers, this none of this is real. What you're looking at now. Um, oh, Australia's not real. Australians aren't real. We're all paid actors. None of this. Such a, this is all a movie set that we're on right now. I figured so. Uh, <laughs> wow. we're just, we're just, now, how do you explain marsupials? Because there's only one marsupial in the rest of the world, and all the other ones are in Australia. What's your explanation for that? Are they paid actors as well? You might actually. The marsupials this. are in fact paid actors. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> so it's 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 kind of it's the it's the greatest conspiracy ever. It's Richard Branson is behind it actually. Um, <laughs> So. <laughs> Richard Branson. Well, somebody needs to try they were clone experiments time. gone wrong. Yeah, just like this monkey over here. Hold up. This monkey was a cloned experiment gone wrong. 
Hold up, where are we at? We're gonna have a monkey on the podcast. To put this out. Next level video. Yeah, the fucking monkeys over there. What's going on? They literally can't <laughs> see shit. It's, it's so funny how how the only glitchy. the only other marsupial that is not in Australia is known for one thing, and that's playing dead. So it's kind of weird. It's, 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 it's it's the it's the how to act is so Australia and Virginia are the two places you can find marsupials. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bizarre. Well, I think we're on to something. I didn't even know that. That's wild. Year. Okay. Anniversary. We're going to crack the marsupial code. This is something I've been investigating for a long time. All right. So we're, we're gonna, boy I think I'm going to duck out. I'll check back in later with another another drop in. Be <laughs> careful, <laughs> brother. See you, man. <laughs> we'll do. That was Peace awesome. Boys. Checking in from the Australian zoo. <laughs> so That's excellent. Back to flat, flat earth. I forget um, who was saying something about it. Well, no, yeah, I want to hear um, Mark on the uh, marsupial thing too. Okay, I never heard about it. this. That's well, what, it's interesting because you know one thing on a serious, on a more serious note, because I think it is kind of fun too. Um, marsupials, right? They're only found in Australia and North and South America, right? I don't think there's any opossums in Europe, but I could be wrong. Um, and if they are there, maybe they they crawled over a different land bridge. But what that tells you is that Antarctica at one point was not frozen and opossums and that type of marsupial could have traveled through there, right? I think scientists even say that that's the, yeah, the actuality. Of penguins too. Penguins too used to be in tropical climate. So right. That yeah. could explain that. Well, and I wonder, you know, given that they're land mammals and, you know, they can't swim very far, you know, maybe there was a time more recently uh, that Antarctica was not covered in ice, maybe in the past, you know, conceivable recorded history. And that explains why, only the mar like only one type of marsupial made it because it seems like it was a short window of time. I'm not a, a evolutionary biologist, but it, it definitely. Do so you think it could swim what, from what Australia it? to? No, I'm saying Antarctica. It would, swim. it would have. There would have been. Well, yeah, it could have swam a short distance, but there would have been if the water level was lower. There would have been. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see, I see. Or if there was like an ice age where there was ice connecting to like a tropical place. Yeah, there's all sorts of questions going on. I, you know, when when I hear the term tropical place near ice, I think of like Savage Land from the Marvel universe. I don't know if there's uh, like a, a real comparison to that, but there are rumors that at one point in time the North Pole. <laughs> was a uh, completely tropical place, even though it had ice in the sort of boundaries between, let's say, the North Pole and uh, northern areas of Asia and North America. So, are those lemurs or gibbons or? Uh, what do we got? I, some kind of some kind of monkey. <laughs> so that's actually interesting because I remember two Hellcats, um, two Hellcat drivers going at it. <laughs> Andy, you, you put me on to something one day when you were telling me about like the box saga and how like the north was like this whole different situation one yeah. time. Yeah, that's I mean that's a definite definitely interesting theory um about the sh like the possible like shift of some kind. You know, they in the box saga they talk about like the whole planet tilting over mm -hmm. on its axis the way it is today, but perhaps what they're talking about could have been like some sort of magnetic shift or, or something, you know, a pole shift of some kind. Um, who knows? But yeah, that is it. It's, it fits, especially with the idea of like a, like a warm habitable area up there. Then of course you have the hyperborean tail, which depending on where you look has, it just keeps getting further and further north. You know, the Greeks put it anywhere further than Thrace, but other sources put it even further than that, you know? Mark right, and, and some people even think that, you know, if you look at, let, let me just point this out, if you look at a lot of the maps from before 1700s, the north 
where north is is oriented towards the left hand side of the page and not the top of the page like we're used to now mm. so it could be the case where it's just a s- small minor perspective error and people are like oh yeah there's this warm habitable place in the north when <laughs> it was off to the west you know and mm. right a map discrepancy that's just my modern kind of hindsight looking at it that could be totally uh, it not factual, but the point about the marsupials kind of relates to flat earth. And I've had like some pretty convincing people on my show. I don't like to be definitive about flat earth because I know it turns a lot of people off. So I still don't know. Right. But one thing I'll say about marsupials is if they are, you know, traveling from Australia to South America, then the ice wall thing doesn't make any sense because if the ice wall is the outer perimeter of the flat plane, then how do you explain marsupials going from Australia to the tip of South America, right? That those two points would be on the opposite ends of the plane if it was flat earth. Whereas if it is a globe, which again, I'm not saying it's either one, uh, then that could possibly make sense as to why the there's only marsupials in those two places. Right. So, but another, another thing is, uh, like you could look at whether, uh, they had made it there on their own or if like, you know, they had somehow made it during people traveling or migrating, uh, like similar to a lot of other species, the way they can like get on boats and stuff. Um, like I, I know, like, you know, between like, ships going from Europe to the quote unquote new world would like bring cats to like keep uh, rats off the ship. And so, yeah, so it could be person. something similar. Well, I mean, like, let's just say uh, like, That's I'm just looking at like thought. water currents, right? Like ocean currents. And if you look at right now, they have these currents that can, that do go from Australia to South America, looking at like a conventional map that we know of right of the globe but like flattened out and if you're looking at the flat earth map the proper one right that still would apply if if something for instance like a i'm just saying like a boat or a raft that maybe had some marsupials on it was set adrift in the current it could still go due east right which would bring it circularly around i just had a stroke to south america and or australia so it could still work to what you're saying mark it's kind of hard to explain without like well i i think i think the point of uh if humans brought them yeah then the, the ocean currents definitely make a difference but what's the likelihood of a possum surviving an ocean current without drowning you know right that's sure. my question when it comes to like the smaller organisms that scientists say drift across the ocean i i'm like no 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 humans are bringing them across in boats and that goes into the whole suppression of pre-Columbian travel to the Americas, right? Because they yes. don't acknowledge anyone but the Vikings coming here before Columbus, when in actuality there were Celts and Welsh people and Portuguese yeah. and Italian and all sorts of other groups of people coming here mm-hmm. all the way back to like Egypt time, like Egyptians, yep. Chinese, you know, so yeah, it's... It's it was all part of the merchant international network. But not to like go too far off from the marsupials, but it is weird that they're only in Australia and then there's a the possum and that's it. Like there's no other marsupial. <laughs> they're all in Australia or they're the possum in Americas. There's all have you guys seen um floating islands? There's no. like there's chunks of land that are huge and they're islands and they're oh, they're actually yeah, floating. Yeah. They're yeah, not I know about but, this. you know, and there's I actually some that yeah, there's so I, I saw this recently. This is how I, I came across this, but it was like they use boats and they like all the people in the town like bring their boats and they <laughs> yeah, like push this that. island, you know. But um, you know, if the you, man something made, like right, not a, it's not like a natural. No, there's natural, natural floating islands, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Natural. Well, I don't know, I'm looking right here. Yeah, it could, it could even be from like a landslide or something. Just like the big top surface of the land goes out into the water and it's just yeah. enough to keep it floating. It's got right. grass, trees, everything on it. Tree, yeah, whole tree, like whole ecosystem. So, I mean, it is possible, I guess, you know, not oh. to, I'm just playing devil's advocate here, basically. It's a but, fucking you know, kangaroo. An island just shows up off the coast. So, like, that's 
That's really cool. <laughs> Floating yeah, islands, seriously. man. All kinds Dude, of animals. That sounds and shit. like a UFO. Like, you know, maybe a, maybe a catastrophe of happens. Just rowing it. <laughs> right. Well, maybe um, maybe like a magnetic pole shift happens or whatever. Younger Dryas or some shit, and then yeah. uh, a giant chunk of land yeah, just happens to break free from its oh, yeah. land mass and drift. Oh, I, can wow. see, I can see that happening. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never Does, thought about um, that before. Do flat Earthers have an issue with flood? This? I'm not smart enough to know if Flat Earth has an answer for this, but what is the, the Flat Earth response to the, the people in the, you know, like the Southern Cross being one perspective and the and Polaris being the other perspective? Like people in the, uh, in the South Pole don't see Polaris when they look up at the sky. They see the Southern Cross. That's uh, a good question. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a new, new believer, like brand new, like just like three weeks. Yeah. I'm not, <laughs> I think we need to abandon um, it. Just like, you know, the, like if you're going to look at flat earth, it's like, man, it's so a good open, question. Let me look it, this it's up. It's such an open ended question because sure. we have like, well, yeah, so is the globe. Map, but that's so just I guess, another hypothesis. Right. Just another there, was CGI. A, <laughs> there was enough evidence, uh, just in a couple things that I found within the last few weeks that made me go, what the hell? Like, wait a minute. Like, it's so obvious once for me, once I saw it. Okay. So like, uh, so for me, it was if then statement as to if what they taught us about globe and planets and all this kind of stuff, the size of the earth, if that's true, the way that they're saying it, whatever size it is, to where the curvature is going to go is going to drop eight inches every mile. Okay. No, no, well, kind of right. Like okay. it's eight inch, eight inch, what is it like? Eight inch per eight mile, feet? eight inch per mile. It's eight inch per mile. Square. So, but that's, uh, and then, anyway. well, that's as, as far as based on the information that the science, the science community is telling us uh, about the size of planet earth. Um, there are so many, contradictions to it and there's so many discrepancies with it not just from the moon landing bs uh that they shoot you know film from or pictures from the moon back to earth and how small the earth is that's like a whole other thing but just a simple simple thing uh when you're up in an airplane or you're up you know i went skydiving years and years ago uh we with um static line jumps you go up like 1200 feet that's not that high uh, but you can look out pretty far, especially if it's not really humid that day. You can see for a long way, bro. Okay. And no matter which way you look left and right, it is flat as hell. It, you don't see any curve at all. When you're on an airliner, uh, I've taken videos with my phone out the window in the last you know 20 years I've been flying. And I'm like, dude. I never thought of it. I never thought of it until recently I started looking into it. But, uh, and then there's videos of these guys, you know, getting off of planes and asking the pilots, Hey, do you have to account for the curvature as you're flying so that you don't, you know, you're flying at 30,000 feet. You don't end up at a hundred thousand feet, you know, 3000 miles down the road. And they're like, no man, it's, it's flat. Like all the pilots say this, all the airline pilots know this. Like it's not a, it's not a confusing thing. The only thing that's confusing is what the science community is telling us. And there's no real pictures from space. They're all CGI. They, they, those have been proven that let they can play. Let me play globe advocate, even though okay. I'm neutral here. All right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I want to hear it. When you're in your car or even when you're in a roller coaster, like you're flat. Every time, like your your relationship to the bars is always flat, or in a car, your relationship to the road is always flat, right? Or else your tires are coming off the road. Right. Maybe you hit a, a curve or something or a bump. But uh, you could be driving up a hill. You could be driving in a valley, right? And it appears a certain way, but it's always flat. Could it be that we just aren't accurately measuring the Earth, and instead of Instead of like telling people like, oh yeah, we don't know how to um, accurately measure the Earth yet. 
they're just like, oh no, the Earth's this big. Don't worry about it. Like, could it could it just be like a perspective thing? That's my it question. Could. I guess, but if you, so in that analogy, like uh, the car on the road, if you're going uphill and you have a level, like, you know, a a level you use for construction or whatever, if you have a level in your car, it's going to tilt, right? If you have, uh, if you're going downhill, it's going to tilt. If you're going sideways, left and right, it's going to tilt. There's uh, videos and these aren't like from one source. Uh, The videos I've seen in the last three weeks, these are videos from me and you, right? The, the people out there that are on planes right now that have these questions. And there's a dude that takes a, <laughs> he doesn't believe in flat earth. Even after the test he did, um, he was like, I heard about these people doing a test with uh, bringing a level, a small level on the plane and measuring because once they're to altitude, um, you're going to see the level tilt as they're, as they adjust for the curve going, you know, a thousand miles or whatever, you know, across a certain country or whatever. And he does it and he's like, uh, well, it stayed flat. It stayed level the whole time. I don't know how to explain that, but his, his whole video, he, he really does not believe in flat earth. And, but that one test he did, he's like, I don't know how to explain that, but I still don't believe it, whatever. Uh, so I don't, I don't know, man. Uh, like I said, I'm new at it, but, there's enough for me to say, whoa, wait a minute, what's going on now? Because if you look up globe and planets theory, there's one source. Mm. This guy sent me, uh, one of my best friends, uh, we've been debating this for, well, three weeks. And he's on the globe side. And he's like, okay, he's going to send me all these uh, videos. He sends me uh, websites and um, you know articles and stuff. They're all from NASA and then space.com. Space.com, I looked up because I'm going to check my sources, was started by one of the main top dudes at CNN, which we know you can't trust, okay? I mean, if someone trusts CNN, uh, I can't help you, bro. Uh, and then, uh, and the, the lead person who took over after him is a astronaut, some lady that's an astronaut that hopefully y'all know that we didn't go to the moon, uh, everyone on here, uh, we can agree on that. That's fake as shit. Okay. That like we have not fake. been footage, to space. Footage is definitely. I would say the, the footage, footage is wild, bro. You, you know what? I Indian th- thing. Yeah. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't mean to cut you off. The, the thing that I think is <clears throat> like the flatter thing is good in a way because it opens a lot of people's minds to the fact that we are being lied to by some of the most important institutions like NASA and shit. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and Again, like some days I wake up and I'm like, yo, it's definitely flat. But I think really what it comes down to is that the information that we get is just bullshit. All the information, everything, right? When I don't want to start listing stuff because I don't know where he's going to post this, but <laughs> we, we, right? I just but, put it on my feet. You know what I mean? Like, get, you, like, get your channel banned. It's not even on Apple. Things that are alive, but um, Spotify you know, like, is my biggest platform. The problem also is that there is uh, psyops out there, right? And I wonder if flat Earth is just another psyop. And I'm more interested in things like honeycomb Earth, things like hollow Earth, uh, yeah. civilizations inside the Earth, and if it is a globe of some kind. Like the whole lie to me is that we're in an infinite nothingness, surrounded by nothingness, never to have discovered anything. Agree. Right. That's the the big lie. Whether you know, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's what keeps us psychologically trapped in this, in this soul trap we're in, I guess, is thinking that there's nothing else out there. And in reality, you, there probably is a lot of stuff going on. I always feel like the, the physical universe is a representation of, of what's going on in mind and mind, you know, Shane and I talk a lot about this on deep end where, you know, it's like, it's kind of, the universe is like an expression of self almost where it's like, you're always questioning if there's others out there, you know, or is it all just consciousness? Is it all me? Is it all in my head? This conversation goes pretty deep, but like, I don't know. I always feel like it's like as above, so below and we're projecting what we feel perhaps, or I don't know. It's like a macrocosm of the microcosm, you know, but um, when it comes to the flat earth thing about like, looking out even of an airplane window. Um, I, yeah, a lot of people who I've, 
Cause I, I, I'm kind of on the fence too, in terms of like, I don't trust NASA or anything like that. And I know there's lies out there, but there's also like, we do have a problem with perception and perspective. First of all, perception is a huge thing that gets in the way of seeing objective reality for all of us, every single moment of every single day. Um, especially when it comes to the big questions like this, it's like, well, you're so tiny on this earth and that doesn't make it even bigger than it's supposed to be necessarily. We just like, it's huge. You know, the earth is massive from our perspective. And so I, I don't know, like flying a plane, if we were to see that, I don't know, it's like so close to the surface. You know, I've also heard the argument, like, why are every building in like we're all, all skyscrapers across a whole metropolitan area all flat? They're all level. It's like, yeah, to a degree, engineering is precise to what they can use to, you know, call flat in an area. You know, they they pull, they, you know, pulverize it all down to be yeah, they level as it, flat yeah. as they can, uh, no matter what. But yeah, I don't know. I, I think a big thing that's obvious. Yeah, like how, looking- I want to test like how fucking far, like just, do you have a level and some sort of like micro fucking meter on this thing? And well, like yeah, the, you just dig, you just dig a, like a, a flat. If it's, I don't know how you think they get the is that, oh, if you're on a globe, the building see if should it just eventually. Keeps getting deeper. Or like, <laughs> well, well, what if it's, run the fucking level across it and see? What if it's as simple as, as it is what you think it is? Like the way when we look at the, we're told we look at the smallest particles. There's an observer effect, right? And that's mm-hmm. you can't account for that. You know, it's it's just there, right? Like they don't even really fully understand it. What if it's the same way where now these NASA sorcerers are like, yeah, let's get them to think it's a a tiny blue marble. And then if it comes that in everyone's mind, and whether it is or not, because everybody's collectively thinking that, it it, it predetermines how they live their life in a certain way. Bro. That's you just blew my mind because I was literally thinking about the observer effect, like while he was talking a minute ago, and you just said that, and I'm like, dude. Well, we're all, we're all you know, we're all tapped in. Yeah, we're connected, yeah. bro. Yeah, we're connected. Bro. But the thing is, for me, it's like that as above, so below fractal universe thing again, where it's like every system throughout every like scale of reality seems to mimic one another in a very fractal fashion, and how like, of course, then you have the flat Earth suggestion that well electron microscopes are fake too and we don't know what what the atoms look like it's all bullshit too like every bit of science has to get thrown out the window and like that's where you get into to me that sounds like the psyop territory where once you start getting into the extremes where if you can bring other things to the table that maybe they haven't thought of and it just become oh you're a shell (laughs) you know I think that's what happened with my friend because I think, uh, or at least my friend to me, as we started debating this a few weeks ago, was that he assumed. I guess he had maybe um, he have had he's had these conversations with other people that believe in flat Earth before, Mm -hmm. and he uh, he assumed I was going to, I guess, feel the same way. Like now that I believe this, oh, every everything in science is out the window, and that's not what happened. It was a very small, a, a very small process, like, a, a, you know, little things here and there that kind of added up. I don't, I didn't really, I don't know all the other things that you guys are talking about, like this, uh, the microscope thing and like, whatever. I honestly, I don't know what flat earthers believe. I didn't look up flat mm-hmm. earthers. I looked up right. some of these videos that, uh, I heard about, I guess like, um, Eddie Bravo, I saw on you know Joe Rogan a while ago, a long time ago, right. and he mentioned that was the first thing that came to mind. I was like, oh, um, so it was a really I don't really know what flat earthers believe, like that's, as a, in general. That's I just no, know see, that, this is this this is the primary problem with flat Earth is that there is not a consensus even in the flat Earth community of what the model is, and ninety eight percent of the people who claim to be flat Earthers are pushing. A, a model that is absolute psyop, right? And you, they just can't tell. But the the biggest thing to learn from any of the flat Earth 
thing, in my opinion, is just you can see how the overlords of truth, right? The Neil deGrasse Tysons, for example, you can see how like they, they spew information as if it's scientific fact to all of us. And we all accept it. Like, Oh, whatever Neil deGrasse Tyson says, whatever Michio, uh, whatever his fucking name is, says is Ah, is, right. But the problem is even they don't know how to toe the line of information that was handed to them because Neil deGrasse Tyson will say, oh, you can't see curvature from a plane. It's not high enough. Uh, He even has this whole spiel how he talks about the dude that jumps from the Red Bull thing was way higher and he couldn't see it. That was a and he even says it. that was a GoPro, the curvature scene to go. So even he's not on track with keeping up with the narrative and it just shows like how the overlords of truth who are spewing the narratives don't even know what they're talking about at all. They're just like, that, right. that's one thing I wanted to touch on was like in the plane, like, you know, it goes up to 30,000 feet. Like your vision is only about like on a clearest day, like 200 miles. That's about as wide as Maryland. And if you were able to see the curvature of that, that would mean the earth would honestly only be as big as the United States, like the entire curve. So like it wouldn't make sense that you would be able to even see a curvature at that type of height. Well, that's what I was saying before. And it's similar to the every building being level thing. And the, the idea was, Oh, well those, those buildings should be all tilted away from each other. And the engineers wouldn't build like that. It's like, no, they wouldn't be tilted. We're talking such a small amount that no one's gonna. It, I, there's an engineering expression, but it has something to do with like threshold, and, and it's that's way beyond it because of how massive the Earth is compared to say the biggest buildings ever made. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There's definitely things that are not true about what they tell us about space and all that kind of stuff. Right. And and I think that that's part of the trap as well is that once the internet came around and people really started figuring out in mass that, Hey, like some of the stuff isn't adding up. I think that's when the flat earth psyop started happening. Right. And this is not to say that the earth's not flat because again, some days I really think it is right. (laughs) It's just like, but I don't think that it's flat in any model that's ever been presented to me. I think if it is, some other non-heliocentric model. We don't know what it is. That information is non-existent for us to get our hands on. We are just being given psyops and then other people's takes on that. So like when you ask like who is anybody believe in flat earth, like Crow Triple Seven says it the best. Like belief is the enemy of knowing. No, I don't believe it's flat. All right. I don't know it's flat either. So I think that's why we're all kind of on the fence with it. Well, Andy, you brought up something that could be potential, uh, I don't know, proof that the Earth has a certain shape, uh, the whole hemisphere, the southern hemisphere, and how people see different stars down there than what we see in the northern hemisphere, right? Um, All over the planet are structures, ancient structures, aligned to different star constellations, right? And if that's going on in the north and the south then, you know, what does that tell you? Yeah. yeah. And it's all sacred geometry, which includes spheres and things like that. Everything is meant perfectly. Yeah. And also, I don't know if you guys know this, and I don't know if Flat Earth has like an argument against this. It probably has something to do with Illuminati and everyone's evil, um, that the Great Pyramid of Giza, like everybody knows it's fascinating, but some of the aspects of it's fascinating. But what's fascinating about it to me is that the mathematics of it and I would butcher it if I try to give you exact numbers, but it basically is a model for the not only the northern hemisphere of the Earth, but then the entire circumference of the Earth. Yeah, the argument for that normally and things like that is normally, did you do the math or did you or are you told by the overlords of truth that, that that's what mm, the math says? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So then I would I would probably have to ask them right back. Did you? Well, and no, of course point, not. Your right. point, Andy. I've heard like like Crow Triple Seven. Like he had, like he like has the fucking math and shit. Listen, and there's people. Maybe, out I don't there know. That, maybe not him, but like I've heard. I don't know. One, yeah, I'm yes. ignorant to the argument. When it comes to the pyramid, I, I did yeah. the math, motherfucker. People claim to have done the math. 
people claim to have done the math on both sides yeah. and it's your choice well, on who which thing, though, is math is math it's not like subjective it's understand this whole thing right i've that's only heard right. one argument against that recently actually mark it oh. just very re- and i don't have much to it but maybe we could kind of this could be a hey let's maybe people i want to say things. something really quick can we hold this thought sure, sure, sure. back to you said the uh the the pyramids well yeah. what's in the pyramids one of the most ancient symbols in existence the flower of life and what is that that's just a 2d perspective of fucking infinite spheres representing existence and you know once you break down the flower of life you it, it has all of geometry within it yeah and yeah. you know that you know on a on, on a point in. On a point that's more pertinent to this whole argument. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to mention that. Geospatially so, in the center spheres. of all the land mass. In a three-dimensional space, so it's Earth. a plane. Sorry. You know what I mean by that? Sorry, so, Mark, say that again? The pyramid is at the exact geocentric point of the land mass on the Earth. I think that's what you were trying to get at before, maybe, Andy. That was and part so, of it, but... Yeah. It's, a, it's a scaled down... like. We've all seen the Fibonacci sequence, right? So Mm -hmm. the pyramid and the earth are in a Fibonacci sequential relationship. Right. Right. Fractals, basically. Exactly. So that's not something that's like math magic. That's mathematics. Like you, you could, you could prove that if you had a big enough ruler, I guess, or. Right. Right. Um, the only argument I heard recently, and I would butcher it if I tried to go into it because it's math and I'm not great at math. It had something to do with the argument with zero being nothing and zero being the source of all integers and the way that math would be handled in one direction or the other. And I've heard that this is a legitimate argument in math, but I don't know that I could never even listen to a debate and know what the fuck was being you know, discussed really, you know? So I'm not sure if there's arguments on both sides and maybe one of them's dominant in mainstream math or something. I don't you know. You know how in the universe there's like there's not um there's not yeah. darkness and light. Pull, pull that back up. Dar- there's light and then the there's absence. absence of dark or the absence of light. And then so does numbers do numbers have the same thing? Like is zero not is zero like a like an actual value? In in numbers, that's or how our is it like work. the absence of numbers? Yeah, it's bi- that's binary, right? So every, okay. every culture, essentially, like the Mayans and the Chinese and different ancient cultures have different mathematic systems, like meaning they count maybe one to nine and then go one to nine and then go one to nine, whereas some put a zero and say, okay, we're going to do t- right. Like the Roman numerals don't have a zero. Right. So mm-hmm. there, there oh, is okay. something to that. There are different yeah. mathematics, but essentially those are variations of math. Like it's math. just, it's <laughs> like, it's like, a. am not a mathematician, but we need, think, one. We need one here. There is something one that's to like that. indoctrinated. It's essentially like, it's, it's just, it's your system. So if you like, if we're going to take like what these ancient alien researchers say, right? Cause I don't fully back that whole theory, but when they look at some of these structures, they're like, Oh, look, see, they put certain things in here to let us know how to understand this. Right. It's like a, a, a cipher that goes along with the code. Right. So mathematically you would maybe denote like somewhere where the equation was, this is a zero to 10 numeral system, right? And that mm-hmm. would help somebody who was maybe 10 million years in the future decipher what you were trying to say. That's like the whole theory of like, how do we communicate far distances into the future? Well, we'd need to use mathematics because it's the only thing that we can trust will possibly like be the same in that right. amount of time. Is it even messaging? Like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Is it even messaging? You know, like, I mean, some would say that this is just the magician's way of doing things because you're supposed to go with the flow, right? So using sacred geometry and using these Fibonacci numbers and and Mandelbrot sets uh, would be going with the flow. So they'd be getting the best results of whatever they were trying to do. You know, it's, it's it's the builder's way, right? It's the architect's. 
Um, another uh, just interesting point to add, if you like ask any or just look up statements from like any like quote unquote, you know, respectable or maybe respectable is not the right term, but like, you know, scientists that talk about like or try to prove that the earth is a globe, they never say it's like a perfect circle. They all say it's kind of just like an oddly shaped rock that resembles a complete circle. Yeah, if that makes sense. So it's not like a straight circle, which goes into like all of the pictures that you see of it. And when you go on Google Maps, it shows a completely perfect circle. So so if we have satellites in space all the way up there that can take pictures of the actual globe, why can't they use super mathematics that they know how to do and use all these different satellites around the, the whole That's globe? That's the thing, though. The, to... the satellites aren't going past the Van Allen belt. Yeah, that, that I think that's the, <clears throat> the big firm. piece. Yeah, they're, they're not, not far see... up enough to see it in, as a whole. So they're piecing together uh, right. pictures of it. I'm <clears> with <throat> that. I mean, that goes into the space's unreachable hypothesis. Sounds pretty real. Doesn't yeah. necessarily have to be connected to the Earth shape. If there's well, the other one thing, thing too, thing, oh, go ahead. One it, thing, it has to, it, the sorry the satellites I do know uh, the height has to do with um, like the speed of connectivity as well as the speed at which it can move around the Earth because if it goes super far out it would take you know weeks longer for it to like do a complete circle so they try to keep it as close as possible to also like increase communication speed between it. Mm. So that's it, an, just another reason. The only thing that I think from flat earth that I could, that I still kind of like always back is like, we've never been to what we all think of as space. We've never been to yeah. space. When you say, have we been to the moon? Possibly. But even the moon isn't technically in space. Right. So yeah. like they recently said it was in our atmosphere. Right. Well, the no, moon is within according the to the scientists and what we've been taught, it's 238,000 miles away. That's definitely into space. No, 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 it's not. They, they really, you know, they they're starting, ago, they're, they're moving started, the yeah. goalpost of where space starts. And now technically space doesn't even start till well beyond where the moon is. It's in, it's in the exosphere. So like, it's still technically part of the atmosphere. It's with right. it. Right. So like they're doing this little word game definition oh. trick that they do well, with everything else in society politics and they're so that they can own space if they're actually out there. But I mean, that's the thing though. Like if we're going to live in this paradigm where satellites aren't past the Van Allen belt, like they said when they originally mm -hmm. invented satellites, well, then none of that stuff is real and it's all just money laundering. Like the same exactly. The I think NASA, right? So yeah. But, exactly. uh, but then again, it's like, OK, well, is there space junk and, and why would they go through the trouble of uh, pushing the gold post back if there wasn't like a tangible asset or resource out there for them to own? Right. I mean, sure. Well, there's three more three more questions I have that you can add to this uh, as you guys talk, Mark, too. Well, uh, let me, can I just let me just to cap that part off real quick, because I do think that you're right. The, the, the resource is itself the, the atmosphere. I mean, there's, it's valuable just to own the airspace in general, the exosphere all the way out as far as they've moved the goalposts. But I think that the only thing that's real from the earth, uh, flat earth theory, to, in my opinion, is what they call the firmament. And what I would say is we're fucking, we're blocked in here. Right. I, in my opinion, if the, if space is real in any fashion and there is beings out there, we're just not allowed to get out of here. Yeah, that's what all the esoteric texts say is that the in the ancient times the this planet was basically quarantined uh, quarantined thank for you, lack of a word. better word. You know, not to imply that we're contagious, but we're basically no, I've, I've in heard like that school, years ago. We're in like school earth. So right. like we, we can't leave until we've graduated, essentially. Is that yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and even or like prison people, earth, very old <laughs> yeah. even the old traditions talking about like after you uh, physically die and the soul being regenerated into the uh, the centrifugal forces of the earth, that one's pretty interesting because it's still kind of technically like a closed system, just even on an ethereal plane. Yeah. So we're, we're just locked in here. I think, I think the, but, firmament, you know, the firmament's real another globe point, or not. Uh, before the rest of the questions, have you guys ever seen the movie Capricorn one? Mm -hmm. So it's an old one. It's from like the late seventies and it's about us faking a, uh, a Mars landing. 
Oh, shit. Uh, and the uh, the the catch is that on its when it went when the the rocket went to leave because it's interesting to see who's in on it and who's not. And 99% of the people are not in on it. Like even the people in the control room, it's a real rocket. They're really landing on the planet. They're just not saying, sending any people there. And um, so the, the thing fucking blows up coming back to earth. And suddenly oh, all these uh, hero astronauts that agreed to go along with it <laughs> have no reason to be alive anymore. Like they have to like oh. escape and run away and shit. It's pretty wild, but it's also like really, it's interesting to see old propaganda because it's way more shallow. They just didn't have to be as subtle with our parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like Nixon on a, on a landline with uh, somebody on the moon, 230,000 miles away. Ridiculous. <laughs> the only reason you'd believe it is because of nostalgia at this point, like my father, you know what I mean? <laughs> so the three questions I have this, you know, concerning, the, well, I guess these are not quite, uh, so these are kind of other things that kind of made me, you know, all these different, things that made me believe or start to believe or start to look into or get, you know, this information about, uh, about flat earth, like, Oh my God, what was, uh, the Antarctic treaty, the, um, like, why is that? Why can't we go past the, whatever it's called the 60th parallel or some crap. Okay. Um, I mean, that's, these are real documents are, I mean, they're not faked, right. I don't know. Uh, and then, the uh, helium thing, like why does NASA own the majority, like high, high majority of all the yeah, helium the, on the yeah, planet Earth? what the Earth? fuck is up with that? So, Boys, and then right, okay. there was a third thing I can't remember. But anyway, these are, you know, oh, the meteors. So the craters on the Earth that science scientists are telling us and been telling us for years that we were taught these giant craters all over the planet uh, are made from meteors from outer space, which just supports this whole open sky thing that we're, we're able to go pass through, uh, if we, you know, whatever, and, and rocks can come in is, uh, these craters are perfectly round. Why are they symmetrical? If the earth is spinning, whatever thousand miles an hour, and these rocks are coming in from this other, you know, how do they hit the ground perfectly directly flat? to make this thing. And this guy does, uh, there's a bunch of them, a bunch of different people on TikTok that do these comparisons between active geysers and what so, you know, so-called uh, craters from meteors. So anyway, those are three things that kind of made me I heard start about this thinking geyser about this thing. Too. Number two doesn't have to mean flat earth. NASA can be doing all sorts of weird shit, including the aquariums and, and well, faking the ISS. The helium, so the helium thing was about uh, satellites not actually being in space. Right. They're on yeah. weather balloons. Yeah. Right. yeah for the, I think but, I, I, so the meteor thing, I think I'm looking this up and it makes sense. Um, something about when meteors come in at a really shallow angle, right? Like, most of those explode before they hit the ground because of the extreme amount of force, the amount of time that they're going through denser parts of the atmosphere at the shallow angle, right? Imagine your, your globe or whatever, right? And you're coming in at like a shallow angle. You're going to be going through the atmosphere longer versus if you're coming straight the, through. The moon doesn't have so, an atmosphere. Oh, wait, so it's most, in our atmosphere. So most, uh, well, the moon, that's another, I don't know. I have to look at the moon's craters and, and really look and see that that's a good question but that's a whole nother topic <laughs> yeah but you know does that make sense though like if they're coming in at a shallow yeah angle, yeah, just, yeah you know and then a lot of those explode most of those explode and the ones that come in at a steeper angle less resistance are the ones that usually end up hitting the ground and that's why you have mostly and, round actually craters. and it's uh, in my like uh, like understanding it's not necessarily like the crater is the entire shape of the right. um, thing. It's more so like, you know, when like something shock, drops, it's, it's, it creates a circular vibration. Yeah. And, and you know, yeah. Yeah. This says that the craters can be up to, to shapes. <laughs> yeah. The craters yeah. can be up to a hundred times greater in diameter of the impactor. Mm -hmm. So like, it's not going to be the same shape. It's going to be yeah. way bigger than what hit. There's a lot of factors that go into that. So, hey, listen, man, I'm sorry to do this, but I got to get going a little bro. early tonight, but I wanted to be here as long as I could. Uh, dude, thanks for hopping on. Man. My, 
Last thoughts on Flat Earth. Uh, to me, after so much psychedelic uh, personal research, you know, inner space is infinite. I would say the, uh, the physical world is a representation of that. And to me, the idea of being in an enclosed space is that is, I, to me, it's flipped that if anything, they would lie about the opposite. You know, um, this is that would be I think the idea stems a lot from whether people directly are Christian or not. It feels very Christian, feels very uh, rooted in a lot of that. And they try to rooted in religion regardless anyway like i had eric dubay personally tell me that you know i was asking for a representation of as above so below in the flat earth model and he immediately pointed me to yggdrasil which i've done a lot of research into the norse mythology and and what yggdrasil is and yggdrasil the disc where midgard is is not a representation of the entire planet by any means. And that's what he gave me for his reasoning. And that was pretty disappointing right off the bat. And uh, yeah, I don't know. That's kind of where I fall on it, where it's like, I believe that they're lying, but I think flat earth is, yeah. Like we kind of mentioned, it's some sort of psyop, but I do think that that meat guard where we are has a lot to do with it. I don't know the toroidal energies and all that. So who knows? But yeah. <laughs> so, Andy, thank you for having me. I appreciate all you guys. Love Seriously, you, bro. Good to see you guys. I fucking love you, bro. Love you guys. Amazing. Have a good one, man. Appreciate, appreciate it, man. Bro. Yeah. Take thank it easy, you guys. so much, it, bro. <clears throat> Andy Rouse. Damn, this is crazy. Podcast. It's it's crazy because it's like when we started this conversation about flat earth right off the bat, I was like thinking to myself, bro, you're about to just like defend the shit out of flat earth. And I had I'm accidentally not. Oh, you thought you were going to defend it? <laughs> yeah, I was really, I was about to be on your team 100%. I was like, ready, let's go, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not. Well, like I said, I'm new. Um, so I'm not really set in certain ways. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm just, really it's, open. I it's just, interesting uh, because I haven't had this conversation in a while. And okay. I guess maybe sitting on those thoughts since I've had this conversation, maybe I, maybe I'm not a flat earther as I have been in the past. You know what I mean? Like that's what I'm kind of coming to my own realization here anyways, but yes. So yeah, I, I think I'm a little bored there with you. Maybe the earth's just absolutely big as fuck. It's, it can still be a spiritual fucking realm. Like crazy shit happens. I fucking talk to dead people, whether you want to believe that or not. I like, I blew my fucking mind. Um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, this place is fucking insane. This place is crazy. It might so, be flat, bro. I don't know. It, yeah, it could be, you know, and it could be what Mark was saying, you know, whatever you're I, fucking that, want it to be. That's the, that, cause I'm all into the simulation and hologram shit. Like, that but to me, there. With the flower of life shit I was saying earlier, like that makes sense that the earth is a ball, but it's still in a technically a flat plane, depending on how thick that flatness is, is a 3D plane. You know, there's these fucking circular things in this, you know, still just X, Y, and Z axis with a ball, with a ball in it. So l let me pose a, a scenario. Okay. okay. This doesn't mean I, I believe it 100%. I'm just um, spitballing, okay? What if? Okay. What if? Uh, what if the Bible is true? What if Genesis and the explanation of creation is true? And like what if the... Um, here, I'm going to follow it through all the way to yep, where we're sure. at today, okay? Uh, what if <clears throat> that's true? Angels and demons are true. Lucifer, all that, all everything we've read in Genesis is true. And Satan is in charge of this world or has dominion over it. He can do a lot, a lot to influence. Okay. Uh, if you look at when a lot of this round earth planets, uh, confusion, like lies being spread by governments, happened it happened when technology started where we could do mass communication okay what if the ancient alien thing were actually demons 
where Satan and his demons uh, teaching humans how to advance technology so that we could get to the point we're at now where he could spread lies, mass and mass, uh, so that we're all so confused. We don't know what our real purpose is here on Earth. I mean, that, I mean, wow. No, I mean, I found, <laughs> like I'm almost like I hear that perspective all the time. Like I listen to the confessionals and shit. And it's like the only thing I don't like about um, Christianity is the fear aspect. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like you have to be scared of everything. Right, but what if what if we're but, what if that part of it's kind of <laughs> skewed? What if that part of yeah. it isn't really yeah, the, that's the what part we're supposed to say. focus on? Yeah, I think, you know what I mean? Like we overthink things. Big truths in the Bible for sure. And if you, I mean, if you hear guys like uh, Micah Dank, uh, he talks about astro. What was it called? Um, astro theology, and he just relates it all back to astrology. <clears throat> and <clears throat> you know, um, when to fucking plant your food and when to harvest it. You know, and that's what all the stories. Or you just have to know how to understand the metaphors. And like anytime they talk about water, it's a certain sign. Anytime they talk about wheat, it's a certain sign. You know, and there's, there's like a bunch of fucking different ways to interpret the Bible. That stuff's really interesting to me, but those guys also always but talk the about book how... Book of Enoch and shit. They, they, those guys also always talk about how, you know, the quote unquote, they have always used that to like control things like monetarily and other things. And and the people who always talk about that are never like crushing it monetarily. And I'm always wondering like, are you just choosing not to see the signs and play the game or does it not work? That's the thing that I'm always stuck on. Does it make sense to you? Like play the stock market, bro. If you can look at the, if you can read the sky, the sky map and See so the they're future. teaching something, and what you're saying is they're. I don't know any what you're talking about. To be honest, but right. they're teaching something that that they're not actually doing. It's like mm-hmm. teachers in school or professors in college. They teach about business, but they've never owned a business. Yeah, <laughs> kind of like that. And not all of them. I don't even. I can't even think of Micah Dank in particular doing that. Honestly, uh, but like I've, I've heard other guys heard saying things like, "Oh, you know, you you could look at collapses in history, and they coincide with such and such a constellation and alignments, and you know, they must have known that these alignments were happening, and that's why the collapse is happening. And, you know, they orchestrated this thing, and it's or, or some, you know, it's like, well, okay, so why aren't you if you're so familiar with the code? Why don't you hit it big, bro? Like something. in South Carolina, the freaking Powerball right now, right. the big one is, uh, it, well, yesterday, last night at 930, and I don't play, I don't ever gamble too much, you know, like it's fun here and there, but I don't ever buy those tickets, um, mostly because I never carry cash on me. And for some weird reason, some law, you have to pay cash for a fucking gambling card i don't know scratch off like what the hell right but um mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> i'm like it's 960 million dollars <laughs> what wow <laughs> A, a billion you still probably get like at least half of it dude somebody's gonna a billion what somebody's gonna win that using either numerology or right. something bro Right. Yeah, you seen the, the guy Jewish that person. figured out how to how to do it, and then he died shortly after. What, bro? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a guy broke the code. Dang! I also heard also, the theory bro. that like most of the people who I don't know, so it's kind of like the presidents how they're all related or something. But all the people who have won the lottery are like connected to people in the intelligence community somehow. No way! Yeah, that, that's what? No, yeah, that that's that's actually real. Oh yeah. shit! Okay. 100%. Yeah. You know, yeah. cousin, uncle, brother, wife. Did half the people in the music industry. <clears throat> Can I yeah, dude, that's another thing too. The music industry and the intelligence agency. That's there's a lot of connections in that. But I mean the guys, intelligence agencies and everything, so that doesn't surprise right, me. Right. Do you guys know about the Monroe Institute? Yeah, yeah Bob yeah. uh Bob Monroe. Yeah, I went I went down there with my dad when I was like sixteen or seventeen. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting because like all the stuff that's there on display and the presentations they give is like you you would think like it's a conspiracy theory, like something you'd read online, but they're like all just straight up like, no, this was started so that the CIA and the Cold War could figure out like, you know, what was going on, how many like nuclear uh missile silos Russia had, like 
it was like the remote viewing thing and uh I like read about the one of the guys he was at I think Stanford or like one of the big uh one of the big like colleges um and uh he was studying like metaphysics or something and the CIA like hired him um to like you know figure out this remote viewing with like a few other guys and um they started like they started using it for their own benefit so they were actually like winning the lottery like they were seeing like like numbers that were a few days ahead and like they were actually at one point they helped solve a murder and uh, like a bunch of other crazy shit but they got like rich as hell off of it um and they were like yeah. teaching people in the cia how to remote view it's interesting that stuff's definitely I totally real. see that yeah yeah that's wild Look, we're about to get into mk ultra i just, right? I just <laughs> heard a, a story about how the mi6 they got some sorcerers okay this is this is uh, in the I mean, same vein british as what, yeah, yeah yeah that's like the british yeah. cia this is in the yeah. same vein as what g just said but uh from the British uh, intelligence agencies. So they got some sorcerers and what they use these sorcerers for, they would uh, allegedly conjure werewolves and use these werewolves in assassination missions. So essentially what they were doing was they would, they had dog, man, they were, they were trying to threaten people, right? And they knew maybe a certain person like was susceptible to maybe like a heart attack, right? So they would have a sorcerer conjure a werewolf in that person's house oh and like they would see this apparition of a werewolf and have a freaking heart attack and they were trying to weaponize that. Like they were doing experiments Holy thinking because it happened like I think the story was it happened like that once. Gives me chills. And it was like a rumor so then the, the agents were like, oh, let's try to weaponize this. But it's kind of crazy, man. Like the like stranger stuff. Yeah, it's just the tip of the iceberg, you know, like drugs used for mind control. Like, you know, I, I don't necessarily su subscribe to the thought that all magic is evil. But I think the more I learn about the occult, like the more I find that it, 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 it leads people to do things, you know, it draws people that want to do things for selfish or, you know, worse reasons. Right. So, yeah, I think that's one of the, the cliches is like with great power comes great responsibility. And I have to wonder if like for every Dr. Evil who figures out these sinister spells and pulls them off, is there like a equal and opposite, like, you know, Christ, for example, or right. any other prophet or any other monk or some kind of spiritual being, you know, like what if this is just like the duality of our world where for every like really evil person, God creates like a super opposite of them who's like heroic and they don't necessarily even clash, but just through the butterfly effect, they're both. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, like a karmic world. thing. It could even be like hundreds of years apart. Right. But like, you know, it's a whole balance thing. It's like fuck Star right. Wars. Balancing it out. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it, they don't even need necessarily need to be in the same time zone yet or time frame. That's a good point. Yeah. That's interesting. On, on the topic of kind of like, scary mystical shit y'all know about like sleep paralysis or have y'all ever had that yeah one time in my life i think i actually told shane about that yeah on your show i, uh, I can tell it again you can tell it again yeah yeah i i have a story to tell too i'd like to hear yours yeah well, i was i was just sleeping bro i had this crazy nightmare i don't remember too much about the nightmare but like there was uh, a door banging and I opened the door and like a bunch of kids run out of the door and then what? the door shuts. The and then I'm like, you know, what the fuck are you running for, from? And they're like, he's chasing me or it's chasing, whatever the fuck they said. Right. So I opened the door and like some shit just sprints through the door full speed and stands over me. And it's like, I don't know, 10 feet, eight, 10 feet tall, just fucking looking over me. And I, I can't remember if it said something or if I felt some kind of way about it. But when I woke up, Right. I was like clearly awake and I could feel like I think the blanket was moving or some shit, but I couldn't move for like a hot second. Right. And then like woke up again in the same position that I was. 
and then sat up and drew and was like, what the fuck? You know, but you know, that's that's scary. I, I definitely know that feeling, too, because for a whole year when I was in like sixth to seventh grade, um, I would wake up in the middle of the night with with sleep paralysis. I could only like like move my eyes around but I was a hundred percent awake. I could see my whole room and like, it was always like when there was a hallway light or anything on, it was always blue, blue light. Like everything was blue and there'd always be this three, three and a half, maybe four foot, just really like bulky stocky figure with either horns or it was like ears, like tall ears. And I think it had like, I remember it like maybe being like a leather jacket, but then it had chains all over it and it was uh-huh. just like walking right up to me. And I thought my house was haunted. So I, I moved to my cousin's house and I was there for like two weeks and it was happening almost every night. And one night I distinctly remember the door opened up and like I saw it come in and I was like trying to yell for my cousin who's on the top bunk. And it was just like walking up to me and like, yeah, it was like really like fucking tripping me out and shit. And I was like, just terrified. And, uh, like someone I talked to just told me to like pray and I'm not like really super religious or anything like that, but like I prayed and it like pretty much stopped. But to this day, I still sleep with covers over my eyes. So if I do have sleep paralysis, like I'm not seeing anything like that. Wow, yeah. I had uh I had it twice. It's very similar to what you had, bro. Actually both you guys. It's um I had a a tall figure, uh shadowy dark figure. It was like ten foot tall, uh, in my room, standing over me, same thing. Uh and the first time this happened, I was in uh, Okinawa, Japan. I was in the Marine Corps for four years. And uh oh. so I'm, I'm in uh my first year in uh, I was my first duty stations overseas. So I'm over there and this particular night, um, you know, we had been out drinking, come back. The, uh, roommate that I had in our barracks was gone. He was on deployment somewhere else. And then, uh, so I'm by myself. So I crash and, uh, I wake up, which normally I don't wake up because I'm, we just Pass drank up, like yeah. gallons of alcohol. Okay. And, uh, and so, uh, I wake up to this really ominous feeling, like just scary feeling the tightness in my chest, kind of like, what is, what is this weird? It was very strange to me. And I wake up and all I, I was the same way. All I could do was move my eyes and I look and there's a shadowy figure in my dark room. And, uh, I was like, Whoa, I mean, instant fear and uh same with you um that you just said about praying and stuff i was raised that way and so i instantly went to prayer and uh the thing just disappeared but um then the second time so then i what was your what was your prayer did you like specifically say jesus or anything yeah i mean i didn't say it out loud i couldn't talk. yeah 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 yeah. but like did you like pray to jesus yes Okay, wow. Uh-huh. I've heard there's a lot of fucking power yeah, in the name yeah. of Jesus. I did. I prayed to Jesus, bro. <laughs> it was like yeah, a reaction. I, 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 I and listen, pray to Jesus sometimes. I didn't tell I didn't tell my buddies. I didn't no one in the Marines that I ever served with, even to this day, know this story because here I am, uh nineteen years old, badass Marine, right? I just got out of Paris Island boot camp, like I ain't, nothing's gonna kill me, okay? And uh and here I am like <laughs> yeah. terrified in my room of this show, uh, uh, basically a nightmare. And I'm going, wait a minute. I just had a bad dream. What the fuck? And, um, and so it was within like a month of that one that I had another one about <clears throat> we're sitting on me and my buddy or so, so it's a dream I'm sitting on. Um, although this one, uh, you know, when I woke up, I was, I was underwater and struggling and I, but I couldn't move. I was about to drown. So I'm where's me and my buddy are sitting on the top bunk in a, in a barracks. And we're sitting up there talking and we're just sitting. So we're on the top bunk. Our legs are dangling. We're in our camis, boots, everything. And uh, we're just talking or whatever bullshit. And we're having a cigarette and we're inside the barracks. So the straight, smooth concrete floor. I look down as we're talking 
And the floor turns to this murky pond water, like real murky, muddy water. And I'm like, what? And I look over at my friend and he's gone. He's in the motion of slow motion falling into this pond uh, or this water. It's still, the barracks is still here. Like everything is still normal. It's just the floor had turned into water. And I was like, oh shit. So I fell in after him and I go down there and it's dark and murky. I can't breathe. And I'm starting to get panicky. And then all of a sudden I see him. I'm like, oh, and I turn him around and it's, this is the weirdest thing. Okay. Uh, it's the face of Ozzy Osbourne from his Blizzard um, album. Okay, uh, I don't know if you know if you ever seen him on that one. Okay, with the white hair, kind of like spread, like scary looking. Okay, and it freaks me the fuck out. And I'm trying to swim to the top, and I can't move. And I wake up in my rack, and I can't move. And I'm like, holy shit, I'm about to drown. Uh, anyway, it only it was like nanoseconds after I woke up that I realized, oh, it was a dream, right? But I still had that paralysis. It's so weird. Yeah, totally. That's so uh, my sleep paralysis is always ex like extreme wave of fear over me. But I've luckily never seen any entities. But yeah, the same thing. Like I cannot move my body. The only thing I can do is move my eyeballs and I can control my breathing. So I, I think I, I've already I've already told this, but um, one of the times I can remember my wife was already awake next to me and I was in sleep this was five six years ago at this point and uh you know the only thing I could do is breathe so just like <laughs> and then like you know I, that, I didn't think to do that till probably like 20 or so seconds into my sleep paralysis and every time I've had him and probably lasts about 30 to 45 seconds but it feels like an eternity you know, and, and like, it's just like straight fucking willpower. You're just like, I'm just stuck there. I'm stuck there and stuck there. And I'm like, move, 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 move. And all of a sudden my body just jumps up. And, you know, and then I was like yelling at my wife. I was like, why didn't you do anything? She's like, I don't, I don't know. You just started breathing funny. I was getting ready. Like I was, I was looking at you and like, you look fine. I don't, yeah, I don't, it's crazy. So luckily I don't knock on fucking wood, dude. I don't want to fucking see anything, dude. Fuck that. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude, it, it still terrifies me to this day. See, but then I have the just intrepid part of me where I'm like, nah, dude, I'm fucking source. I'm just going to obliterate you. There's a weird thing about uh, fear and adrenaline, man. It's a weird thing. I actually just had like a weird situation where I had a serious adrenaline rush. And like after the fact, a couple days later, actually, I was thinking about it and I was like, man, There's like different kinds of adrenaline rushes. Yeah, no, it was uh, not a good one. I was, it was a uh, beef. I had beef with somebody. Well, oh, shit, everything was fine. It ended fine. All good. But you know, I had a moment of like straight adrenaline flowing through me one day, and like a couple days later, I was thinking about it. Like, wow, that happens so rarely in, in our society, and like, you know, that's gonna affect you know your sleep patterns. And it did. It fucked me up for like a couple of days. It was weird, you know. And it's like you know, you think about your dreams and then sleep paralysis and all kinds of shit. So it's like. Dude, my sleep's been all fucked up. I it hope. could it could very well be some weird, like crazy spiritual interdimensional shit, or it could just be like a byproduct of like our bodies adjusting to this new lifestyle of being, you know, not hunting and shit, you know, not chasing each other with spears. All so like we're just fucking. <laughs> So sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night and we just can't fucking move. We're just terrified. We're like, what the fuck does our body doesn't know what to do? We're just shutting down. And like, oh shit. It's like and then like, I don't know if you look at the procession, the equinox shit too. Like apparently our consciousness is rising and they talk about the, you know, the pole shift. And that's when like consciousness is supposed to fucking shift and all this shit. And like, I, I'm like, I don't know, dude, like look at all the people like looking into spiritual knowledge and everything now compared to even five years ago, let alone 10 years ago. And then if you just every year past that, it just gets exponentially less, mm. you know? So like, I don't like, I think there's something to all of this, you know, consciousness raising, you know? So, yeah. I don't, you guys ever hear about like um I forget what the uh Lucifer's technology I think is like the the term for the theory Lucifer's technology so the like, Lucifer the Lucifer experiment 
No, no. It's like the idea that uh, dark entities throughout history have like possessed, if you will, certain individuals to invent certain oh. things in this reality. To, oh, like, yeah. I, I was just I listening totally thought to about that. Today, I believe that. Lucifer had been described as having a musical instrument built into his body. And apparently the Lord gave him the ability to make the most beautiful music, so on and so forth, right? And um, there's all these legends not too long ago. I mean, everybody knows about Robert Johnson selling his soul at the crossroads, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah. going back to the like 1500s, there was, uh, there was a guy in Italy who played the violin who all his peers said he sucked. And then he made a deal with the devil and played this violin piece that's never been repeated. Like it's one of the hardest violin pieces ever performed. And, you know, people still to this day have like, I don't think they've ever accomplished playing it. It's something like a qua, like a, a tri pattern note. You're a musician, Shane. You probably know a thing or two about this. The devil's trine is probably what it's more commonly referred to as but i've heard i've heard of it but i don't i don't i mean i i don't i don't know anything about it but that would be you know on the point of like music right what is yeah. music in the ancient times where they didn't have computers and whatnot well it's a scale of vibrations and yeah. that we're using all this technology that runs on electricity that's a vibration you know scaled and so yeah, it's in a certain interpretation. All of this is Lucifer's technology, Pro Promethean technology. And to your point earlier, Eric, you know, like, yeah, it's possible that the Nephilim, these beings that the Bible talks about, went around every culture and gave them information and technology. I was just looking up randomly here, this mountain in Sri Lanka called Adam's Peak. And it's called that because the Muslims believe that Adam from the Bible came down to earth there and stepped his foot down. That's like a five foot long footprint embedded into the top of this mountain. And the Buddhists believe it was Buddha. And, you know, Buddha is said to be 35 feet tall. So here's these stories going back to, you know, the world's major religions talking about giants. And we have these evidences of giants. What if they helped build these megalithic structures to your point, Eric? And that's why, you know, this goes in the, these sites. So this goes into the Drunvalo Melchizedek stuff of like the, you know, the levels of consciousness. And once you do go up a level in consciousness, the physical body gets larger too and uh so that's why i'm fat <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that after years i finally have closure on that that's awesome are you in the zoo's cafeteria over there <laughs> uh, we, we done we done we leave and now now we're going to the aquarium oh well you gotta hit the gift shop on your way out right Looking, that's where Jen's at right now. Hold up, let me flip the camera out. She's in there right now. I'm waiting. Mm, um, <laughs> Got to pat a marmoset. It was pretty lit. Hey. <laughs> yeah, that's funny you brought up uh, Giants, Mark, because oh. this whole time I was thinking about um, that was going to be my next question. If you guys had seen these things about uh, ancient giants, and I'm not talking about the ones that they have black and white pictures of where the guys are like 10, 11 feet tall. I'm talking about the ones that where mountains are like petrified people like bro they're uh, huge and then these uh mm. all these different mountains tops and stuff that look like cut down trees like tree trunks the i trees, do this uh, yeah all of this stuff flat earth in the last three weeks and all of the, the all of these things that i'm talking about i'm asking questions about have come up just in the last three weeks so this is all new to me Okay. Uh, and most of the things you guys are talking about, I haven't heard of. Okay. So I don't know. Uh, I'm a new you're conspiracy hanging, theorist. You're hanging in there. Um, man. You're doing great. One, one, <laughs> one thing I can just say, like one thing, if I just may be a devil's advocate for a second with the mountaintops as well, a lot of those weird shapes and stuff are explained more by um, volcan like the fact that most mountains like that used to be volcanoes and just a erosion and all that because like as you guys have seen the power of erosion like oh well that, let, that, that the volcanoes blow their me, top off right let me ask you oh, this yeah. though is erosion creative enough to make a exact human footprint 
You'd be surprised, bro. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there are certain things that are, there are certain things obviously that are like, and like, that's hence why I said I'm playing devil's advocate here. To, right. But so yeah, a lot, a lot when, of when when people talk about like the tree giant trees, like it definitely <laughs> runs on the absurd. But I'll tell you what, I grew up not too far from a mountain called Sleeping Giant Mountain because even if you don't know the local lo- legend about it, you you drive by it and you're like, whoa, that looks like a person lying on their back. And there are all these stories from the Native Americans talking about these two giants that used to roam here. And one day Thunderbirds came and shot them with lightning and they fell to the ground and became mountains. And there are two mountains about the size of, you know, they're about the same size as each other. So it's like, hmm, maybe the maybe these mountains were, to your point, Eric, ancient giants. Like it's not even a Christian centric idea necessarily because there are all these other cultures that ha- have experiences of these beings so it's like something's going on in the ancient past that makes people see and remember these stories of giants yeah man that's, that's my point. that's my point um i was getting to like the anunnaki story and like the thoth thing like the, apparently thoth went around and all of his other the grandmasters went around or whatever they're called some kind of fucking master. Um, this is all new age shit. Ended. Yeah, so, ascended so, masters. Um, you know, went around and gave the technology to all the people as <laughs> you know after they fell from consciousness, and that's the, so, you know, that's the Atlanta that- story. And that's also the like Anunnaki slash or I guess I don't even know if the Anunnaki story is different. Is it different from the fallen angel story? Yeah. I guess that's right. the book of Enoch shit. They're similar. I mean, but. to expand on your, uh, the, the sleeping giant for a second, where I'm currently at here in Australia, I am about 20 minute drive from a place they call it. It's called Mount Tippergagan is the name of it from, uh, the indigenous word, but everyone knows it as ape mountain because the, the way that it's eroded, well, quote unquote eroded over the years, this ex volcano, is it literally looks like a gorilla chilling in the mist, like especially when all that comes in. So it's one of those what? one of those things too that if you want to look into the deeper lore of it, you go, How did this giant five hundred foot tall gorilla end up in Biwa? So Yeah, there's um something also about the oxygen levels too, right? So going back millions of years, if you believe the earth is that old, uh oxygen levels were much higher. Mm-hmm. So that's why dinosaurs were so big and shit. Thing. You know, I, it's, so it's like things could have definitely been bigger. I mean, plants you know, were bigger. There was a lot of megafauna and bigger animals going back into ancient times. So, you know, there's no reason to think that human beings couldn't have been giant. Look at that fucking thing. What the fuck? That's crazy. Bro. I've seen that in, I've seen that in movies. Is what? That real? I think this is from a movie. What's the name of that mountain again? That's from, that's Kong. from the movie uh, Congo, dude. <laughs> yeah, I'll just say. <laughs> what, what, what's the name of the Australian mountain again? You know, it, listen, you know what's funny is we're all sitting here is laughing he at this shit and leave? talking about all these things. Left. If the real, like if, if all this stuff that we're bringing up mountain. is real and these things happened and these spirits are watching us going, <laughs> look at these dumbasses. I don't remember what he said. They don't, they don't believe anything. <laughs> dude, um, <laughs> Eric, you want a cool world. document to read, man? Go look up the gateway process. Yeah, that'll give you that'll give you a bunch of shit to read, and and it's form the way that the document's formatted. It breaks it into sections, and it, okay. each section you'll read through it, and you'll be like, "What?" And then you'll go down a whole rabbit hole about shit, man. It's called the analysis of gateway process. The gateway process. Yeah, dude. Look that shit up. Okay. Just bookmark that. Oh, I think I found it. Mount Tibro Gargan. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like it. That's what he said, right? Didn't that sound like what he no, said? Uh, something like is this, that. Is it from the CIA? Yeah, CIA doc. Oh, oh geez, okay. okay. It does kind of look like a gorilla, I guess. I don't know. Here, hold so on. So let me ask you this. What? So going back to um, like my scenario earlier, if the Bible is real or true, I guess. And so, you know, speaking it's of true. giants... What if, um, so like, uh, you know, the story of Babel or the tower of Babel. Yeah. So I've read that numerous times. I always try to understand it. And I'm like, what, why would God, there, there's no way the us, these little tiny humans could build a structure to go 
all the way into heaven if there's a firmament that high up and if heaven is above it. Like there, you couldn't even reach it. What? Like he, we're not that advanced. But if the first iteration of humans or beings on this planet were that big, like to like their dead bodies or mountains, what we see, maybe they could build something that big. I don't freaking know. Maybe that's why he did scatter them and confuse their language. I don't freaking know. Like, it's just, it's weird that we have these giant structures and there's a, this story in the Bible that's like kind of indirectly confirms something like that. Like if they were giants, then that would make more sense. I don't know. Just, it's weird. I'm with you. I got to run bricks. This was fun. Happy one year anniversary, brother. Eric, Two years. Great to meet you, Jeff. Great to talk to you again. And uh, yeah, dude, on to, on to the next year and, and beyond, brother. I know. Oh, so. yeah. Podcast. Right dude, on. thank you so much for coming on, Mark. It means so much to me, man. Of course, brother. Of course. Peace I had out, Mark. Time. It was great talking about all this stuff. And uh, yeah, dude, there's so much more to this particular topic that we're getting into so i hate to go but i have to because my girlfriend is gonna leave without me if i don't leave oh see you guys <laughs> hell yeah see bro. you later bro have a good one man peace Bye. see you man mark from the my family thinks i'm crazy podcast also runs all media united if you got a podcast hit him up <clears throat> but yeah dude so gateway process man uh, keep that. That's actually from the Monroe Institute as well. Going oh, okay. back to that from earlier. I'm looking at the document uh, right now. I'm going to save it. Yeah, save that document, bro. Okay. That, they talk about all kinds of stuff, man. There's a spot, there's a quote in there. The universe is in and of itself one gigantic hologram of unbelievable complexities. Mm. This, is, this is from the Monroe Institute. This is the CIA. Yeah. They say the universe is a giant hologram. I mean, Take that for what it is. Right. That's what psychedelics told me. Yeah. I've been there, bro. <laughs> I've been at the source of the hologram on psychedelics, and it's good, right, bro? That's what it is, dude. <laughs> that's what it is. So, God damn it. I always get to that fucking point. And they talk about like um, REM sleep and like uh, uh, astral projection. What else they talk about in there? They talk about. Um, out of body experiences. They talk about, you know, some of the psychic shit that you were talking about earlier. Uh, all kinds of shit, man. That yeah, document th- is full of stuff. I think I, I almost astral projected one time. I was like really like consciously trying to do it every night for like a month. And like that last night I did it. Like you're, you know, they say you're supposed to like vibrate your body and like shake yourself out and like, my shit was fucking vibrating. I felt like I was fucking rocking my bed. And like, I felt myself like float up a little bit and it freaked me the fuck out. And then like, I, cause I wasn't actually moving. And then I, like, I just shot my arms out and I was like, holy fucking shit. And then I never did it again. If you, uh, if you got 500 bucks to spare, you can buy the tapes, the Monroe Institute focus oh, yeah. tapes and fo- focus. Because like focus 13 is apparently the one that will like put you in, in out of body experiences and astral project. And then everything beyond that, like, so focus 14, all these different focus tapes that they have, it's just basically uh binaural beats. I'm, I think, um, Trippin'. you know, they talk about traveling to the future, traveling to the past, like l- crazy shit. How old are those? The focus tapes? Yeah. 80. Well, the document came out in 80. Two or eighty. I got my hands on some like OG binaural beats, but like got you know like stole off the internet. Yeah, when I was like, I've seen I've seen the Monroe Institute focus tapes on eBay for like five hundred bucks. I don't know the real ones. It was called like like Meet God or Talk to God or some shit. And like, holy shit, it gave me basically the same feeling. As when I was trying to astral project, like I was like just way too fucking intense. I was like, holy shit. And I had to, I took the headphones out. I was like, I could I think like, the Monroe Institute ones were called Hemisync. Hemisync. That's right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hemisync. 
uh, focused. Uh, Hemi what? Hemi sync, like synchronize. Hemi sync. It's in the document. There's a whole section on Hemi. Oh, is it okay? In the document, yeah. It's crazy, how, like how powerful your fucking mind is, and I think you can, re- you really can fucking manipulate the reality around you with it. Like I, um, me and two friends of mine all did this ten thousand dollar ritual, where all we did was close our eyes and visualize. I visualized me sitting where I am right here at this fucking desk. And I just pretended I had a hundred dollar bills and I counted it out till I got to 10,000. And, uh, you know, I kept a nice positive mood the whole time. I was like, fuck you, I'm gonna fuck 10 grand, I'm gonna shit out. And, um, you know, like six months fucking later, like I got $10,000 for pr- like pretty much no reason. And, Wait, same same thing family's. with my two friends. Like it, you know, within like eight months for one of them, and within like three months for the other one. So like, what? Like that shit's fucking real to me, anyway. Like, what? So I mean, I'm not saying I haven't tried to do it again, and you know, and honestly, I haven't. I haven't. Really, I like half-assed it. I didn't do it nearly as good as I did it the first time. So I feel like that definitely plays a part in it. It was like consciousness or even myself, my subconscious even was like, ah, you don't fucking mean it this time. You don't get it, bitch. <laughs> I think I found the tapes, actually. I'm oh, shit. Oh, shit. Brains. Oh, brains shit. Got the lime or... wire link. At the Piper <laughs> Bank. Oh shit, LimeWire. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, I just clicked Using on Using BitTorrent or UTorrent. Does bro. it play it? It Does didn't it blow my computer up and it just linked me to a YouTube video. Oh, okay. so, oh I mean, shit. Does it know? have the sound? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it, 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 let's hear it. Do we have headphones on? Every, okay, if you have headphones on. Oh, okay. all right. Be trip, prepared. I'm going to trip you out. What is this now? Hopefully it's not a. Evil, oh my um, god, there's even so many incantation. Of, there's so many of them. Fucking um, list. Like, yeah, there's a whole list, dude. Freedom to the focus ones are the ones that I was reading about recently. Focus tapes. I don't know. There's a bunch, dude. There's a shit ton of weird shit you can listen to, weird frequencies that you can listen to that apparently um, you can. Energy everything. food. Um, freedom number one, lift off. Freedom two, remote viewing. Oh my God! Do you guys, you trying to remote view right now, dog? Play on Listen Brains. Play links me to YouTube. <laughs> Have you guys tried uh, fasting for? Like you a, told me about fasting. I don't have uh, enough a handful of days. No, I'm dude, I can only make it. it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So I did a, so last week I did a fast from, um, Tuesday until, um, last night was my first meal. So Friday night and I, I cut out everything food. Uh, I mean, I, all I did was drink water. It was just a water fast. So dude, talk about a caffeine headache. Holy shit. Oh yeah. I'm sure. Can you guys hear that? Oh yeah, I hear some. Did you did you no. share? It's in mono. Did you did you or I think it's in I mono. Know. I don't know, but it just sounds like weird wind or waves, almost kind of staticky, hmm. static yeah. wind. Um. Anyways, I don't know. I almost I got to jet out of here too. Um, uh, all right, bro. I end up being on here with you till midnight. I'm trying to get up and go fishing <laughs> tomorrow morning early as hell. Nice. No, nah, bro, you're trying to. What do you- what are you fishing for? Night. <laughs> fishing for anything, man. Redfish, trout. Okay. Flounder. Heck yeah. Where are you at? Florida. What state? Oh, Florida. Old Florida. Nice. Yes, sir. Okay. So at least it's not going to be cold in the morning. No, it's going to be hot as hell. It's going to suck. <laughs> right. It's going to suck. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it was good to meet you, man. Yeah, you as well. Appreciate yep. it, Shane. Jeff. Congratulations, bro. Happy for you, dude. Thank you, man. Absolutely.
Fuck some it. music. Right, right music. We gonna do it. We All gonna right. do it, dude. Thanks for coming on, bro. It was fucking yeah, great to talk to you. Great to see you. Absolutely. All, All right, guys. Good. Be safe. Out. Peace, bro. Jeff Fernandez, Shadow Band Podcast. And I think he's back on Infinite Rabbit Hole podcast now. I think they're I think they're all coming back. It's not just Jeremy anymore. So go check them out. They talk about a lot of cool shit. If you like what Jeff had to say, then you know, they talk about half the shit Jeff wants to talk about, but you get a lot of other perspectives on it too. So Yeah. What's up, y'all? What's up? What's up, dude? This Barely. is this is pretty good. Yeah, that's cool. Last last year, I went for like four hours. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> I don't think I can do that this time. Right? <laughs> Even know, less right? people responded this time, or like actually showed up. Yeah, so like I don't know. I'm good, dude. Thank you guys so much for fucking coming on. That means a lot to me. Yeah, thanks for having us, bro. Yeah, man. Dude, you're right, dude. I like. I'm so happy to like. Just I, I'll, I hit him up. I'll just hit him up. I was just like, yo, dude, I'm coming on your show. Like he just has. I mean, he that's how he has to set show set up, which is really fucking cool. I wish I could figure out how to do that. So that's what I wanted to do originally was interview people about their psychedelic experiences and see, yeah, how I could help somebody in some way if i could do that i would feel good but uh you know no one i didn't have i have still have not had one single person contact me but yeah know. well i mean i i uh when i started mine i even now i still reach out to people people don't usually hit me up it's very rare um oh, no shit. yeah out of out of 20 uh podcast the last 20 podcasts maybe three Okay. Um, hit me up. No, no, it's oh, always shit. me yeah, reaching yeah. out. Yeah, it's uh, so it, you know, it's usually from the last person I talked with or the last couple of people, mm-hmm. they'll tell me about somebody, and I'm like, oh, and so then I actually, you know, I, I follow that person while we're having this conversation. Yeah, I'll yeah, follow them on Instagram yeah. and then they'll follow me back and then I'll send them a message, and that's how I hit them up. And so I don't, there's a lot of times like me and you, I don't know somebody very long on Instagram before we actually get on here. And that's why is because as I'm talking with somebody new, they tell me about somebody else that I don't know. And I go, oh, wait, let me follow them. And then I hit them up that night or the next day. Hell yeah, dude. Um, You're on it. I love, I mean, I just, I really love people in general and, uh, and I love hearing their stories. So, yeah. Hell yeah, man. So that's what I was saying, dude. Like, I'm so glad to, you know, call you my friend, if we can say that, dude. You're cool as hell, man. man. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Next time, uh, where are you? I mean, I'm in we'll South talk about Carolina. it off here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got fam, I got family down in South Carolina. Oh, I don't care about it. Somebody said, um, I put up my actual address, my home address on, on uh, oh. my Discord. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, I put it on there and uh, even on my YouTube, I put on there like on a video and stuff. And somebody sent me a message like a few months ago and goes, Hey man, I don't know if you know this, but you dox yourself. And I go, uh, I'm not sure what that means, but I think yeah. you're talking about <laughs> like a gay mad. I said, I don't care. I'm, I'm okay. If somebody wants to know, I'm first off, nobody listens to the podcast. You know, like, I, I'm not popular, right? As far as like the mainstream goes, it's not, you know, it's not getting millions of views. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not going to get some crazy showing up. It's okay if I do. Hey, it'll be someone else to talk with. I don't, that's fine. You know, <laughs> I really don't believe that. I, I believe that the majority of humans are so good, like have good intentions. Yeah, They're really most humans are. We're we're bad to ourselves. We're mostly bad to ourselves, and sometimes that comes out against someone else. Usually, somebody that's close with us because they just happen to be there. But mm-hmm. it's. Um, I think the majority do not have bad intentions to do some harm to another person, especially random. So I don't like, I, I put my address on there and I'm like, yeah, it's okay. It's fine. Whatever. Somebody knows. Cause I never got a PO box, like for getting fan mail. Cause mm-hmm. we've gotten some people, you know, sending stuff and mm-hmm. I, we've sent stuff out. I always put my address on. It's okay. Like it's whatever, like do a quick Google search on my name. You're going to find my stuff anyway. Like, I don't know, yeah, it's whatever. Yeah, for real. I mean, that's why <laughs> I know? use my real name and, like, literally my name is in the name of the podcast. Right. 
you know. Yeah, I don't so, mind. But yeah, yeah no, it's crazy shit. Like, someone would have to be stupid to come and try to cause some trouble. <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's the thing too. We've got um, guns and enough guns and ammo in this house to ward off the, you know, half the CIA probably. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Hell yeah. And we got strong. people in this house that know how to use them, or at least, you know, close by that know how to use them. So, yeah. 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 Blah, bow. Pow, pow. I love guns. I love, I love guns. guns. I would really hope I wouldn't have to use them against somebody. Yeah. But um, when I don't know, it's just uh, I never really get fearful of it. I just I'm prepared, but I'm not paranoid. Yeah. 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 That's how I don't know. That's how I was goose hunting. Like the first time I ever went goose hunting, I was like, you know, nervous and shaking. And after I shot my first goose, like I was good. I fucking boom, boom. I'll take out, I'll take out two or three. Yeah. I, like, I hit one with all, with each shell, you know, take one of the other guy's birds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good shot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, my first deer. I didn't even get the deer. I felt horrible for even fucking shooting at it because it was a doe, but like it was a lot of pressure on me to get a deer because I was like 15 and I hadn't got a deer yet. And uh, I was fucking like, how like how the fuck could I that shoot adrenaline. a person? <laughs> like, how could I shoot a person? But I don't know. I guess that's different though. Like I have a family and shit. If they're like busted in my house, so, like, I'm solid, dog. No. I like. I don't know. Like, that's the kind of adrenaline I think I'll have. I think it'll be more of a a, a fearless, like uh, like fight, fight, more mechanical, yeah, fight instead of flight or right. freeze. You know, because uh, fucking today in airsoft, I couldn't fucking see shit because I was all, <laughs> I was all fogged up. And it was like fucking like pyro going off. There's fucking like blank fire. And the next thing I know, like a fucking LMG, just like, ah! you know, that adrenaline was, was fear based. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> oh man. So, I mean, you have any guys have anything else you want to talk about? I mean, I'm down to keep going, but I, you know, whatever. I brought up, most of my questions really like all the different things I've heard of and thought of and seen over the last few weeks, it's all brand new to me. So, um, oh, yeah, dude, it's cool. You're digging into this shit. I love it. It's, uh, it's very interesting, very interesting. And, um, yeah, so, yeah. Oh yeah. A lot, a lot of the shit Jeff was talking about and if, yeah, feel free to reach out any of the guys I had on here tonight. They're all really great. Nice fucking guys. Yeah, you I know, follow like Andy. Um, I guess that's about it. I'll have to follow mm-hmm. Jeff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shadow Band. Is that yep. what it is? Shadow Band Airsoft or <laughs> Airsoft? <laughs> 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 it's Shadow Band Podcast. Okay. Hell yeah. I wonder if that's on his um, Instagram in the uh, group chat thing. Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep he's in there. Look. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, hell yeah. All right. Well, everybody, thank you yes, for listening sir. to the two year anniversary of the I Knew Some But I Didn't Know It All podcast. Yeah. So thank you, E Rock, so much for coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely, man. Gibbs, I love you, bro. Thank you for coming on the show. You've been holding it down with me. Gibbs and I recorded my very first podcast episode together. If it wasn't for him, I don't know if I would have actually even started the show. Nice. So, okay. Hell yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's great to meet you, Gibbs. Yeah, nice meeting you too. So, that's the show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Peace. Shout out Jeff Fernandez for writing this fucking awesome instrumental.
inside